Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin. In today's video, we're going to explore grading Morgans from good to fine. And we're going to take a closer look at these three coins that I have as our examples and just kind of get used to seeing what you want to look at on each of these three grades. So for those of you who get to look at a lot of Morgans, this is going to seem kind of, I don't know, blasé, simple stuff. But a lot of you don't have access to a lot of Morgans at any given time. So hopefully this will help you as you start to learn how to grade coins. Now Morgan dollars are amongst the most collected coins in the world. And the Morgan dollar, for most of them, these beginner grades of good to fine are not going to be the type of thing that you necessarily grade often. This is going to come into play when you're looking at coins that are really expensive and rare coins. So you want to talk about your, you know, your 1893 series coins, some of your 1895, some of your Carson cities, where you can actually have a good to a VG to a fine and have really big price differences. So let's take a closer look just at the beginning grades of the good. So one of the things that you'll notice on a good coin is that you're going to have flatness all over the coin. Basically your definition in almost everything is nil, right? So the cheek is just flat, the ear is half gone, there's no hair over uh, Liberty. So the coin book that I like to use, we'll use the term merge because as the lines disappear, the design merges, right? So there is no hairline anymore. The forehead has merged into the hairline. Those uh, cotton blossoms, which are in her hair, are completely flat. And you'll see that the rim is worn down almost to the point of being gone. Typically on Morgans, you'll still have a pretty strong date on coins that are good, or even AG, just because of the way the coin was produced. On the reverse of the coin, you'll find once again kind of that same look all around the rim, where there's areas of the rim that are basically gone. There will be little to no design at all in the wreath, so most all of the wreath is flat and form, uh, not formless, but all those lines have merged together. Same with most of the arrows and the majority of the feathers. You'll have very slick, very, very slick wings. The head feathers are gone. The breast feathers are gone. Only the most protected areas still show some design elements, which is gonna be that center of the coin in those wings. Now as we move from the good to the VG, what you're going to start to see is just a little bit more design throughout. And at a glance, you can already see that the design that was missing is now there and incorporated. You're going to have quite a bit more detail showing through the hairline to where you're just going to start seeing some of these horizontal hairlines popping up along with the actual hairline itself showing back up. The rim should be pretty solid all the way around, should be completely solid. The wheat stalks and the cotton balls start to show just a touch of design. And of course the hair on the back has quite a bit more design to it. On the reverse of the coin, you're going to start to see small elements reappear. You start to see a little bit of design popping up into the wings on the outer portions where there was no design. And you'll start to see small amounts of design elements popping up in the leaves. The rim once again should be nice and solid for this grade. It's very unusual to have a coin so misstruck pressure-wise as to be able to get a nice VG and have rim design missing. So the rim should still be solid to get to a VG grade. As we move on to a fine, 
you'll start to go from very sparse amounts of detail to coin that UI would more recognize as having the overall design elements in place. The design elements at this point should be fairly bold. So as you start to see separation in the wheat stocks, it's not just one design element, it's multiples. The cotton, same way, you start to see actual design elements. And the leaves, same thing. There were no design elements on the previous coin. Your hairline, of course, you see multiple, multiple strands of hair. In the VG example, the hairlines are mostly just blocks of hair, and now you actually have what looks like strands of hair. As always, at this point, as always, you'll see a strong rim, of course, because that is just going to keep building off of the previous grade. One of the things that you also start to see on here is that the cheek, the overall jawline, really starts to take shape. It actually has dimension to it. Whereas on the previous grades, a lot of times that cheek is going to have an overall flatness still to it as the metal is all worn down. On the reverse of the coin, you're going to see quite a bit more element design, including more hair, if you will, on the eagle, uh, on the head of the eagle. So feathers is the correct term, but I say hair because it's on the head. You'll also see more and more wing design than you had previously. And really at this point, one of the things that you start to see is separation lines throughout the center parts of the leaves. This will help you understand that the coin is a fine. You'll start to see more detail also in the eagle's tail feathers and also those arrows on the back end of the arrows. You'll start to see more and more design. Typically on these grades, you when you get used to looking at them, you should be able to tell the difference on the coins without magnification or maybe just with a five power loop. You can start to see the design elements very clearly differently from one to the next. Luster is not a, really a factor on coins in these grades, but you do want to watch out for cleaning lines and any other small hidden problems that can affect the overall quality and price of the coin. We're going to go back and look at our goods to our VG and see the gentle transition from one level to the next. Because coinware is on a ever-present continuum, there is no exact and precise grade for any given coin. We use a coin grading system that assigns specific grades, but every grade, every coin in every grade is actually going to look a little bit different one from the next. This is a coin grading tip for you to think about, and that is the more coins that you look at, the more you can realize when there are multiple steps between one coin grade to the next. So as you look at these two coins, there's just a large difference in detail. And you should be able to kind of figure out that there is going to be a number of wear levels in between these two coins. This is important, of course, if you're collecting Morgans to know exactly kind of what you're getting into. But in general, the more coins you look at to grade, the more that you can start to look at coins you've never seen before and assess them and understand and understand an approximate grade, even if it's a foreign coin you've never been exposed to before. Also, a grading tip for those of you who are not familiar, uh, I mention this from time to time, my favorite coin grading books are the earlier a a grading standard books put out by Whitman, mostly in the 70s, because I actually really enjoy looking at the line grades. Uh, they have definitions in here, both, um, you know, from the very basic, a fine being moderate to heavy wear, even wear, entire design, clear and bold. Very good. Well-worn, design clear but flat, lacking detail. Good, heavy worn, 
uh, heavily worn design and legend visible but faint in spots. And then also under each section they have a little bit of the more detail. Hairline along the face is clearly defined. Lower two cotton leaves smooth but distinct from cap. Some wheat grains merging, cotton blossoms flat, but the two lines in each show clearly. A lot of this is the same language that's used in the Red Book. I happen to find the line drawings a lot easier to use as we go through the different settings. So this is a book that I recommend uh, anyone who collects US coins purchase. You can usually find them online for not too much money because people have disregarded them for newer things. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. I help, hope that helps you learn a little bit more on how to grade these three levels of Morgan dollars. You can subscribe by clicking on the button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.